Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay American League West preview. If you didn't see it, yesterday we did the American League East preview where we talked about all of the uh, signings, what teams uh, added and, and lost uh, in the offseason, as well as uh, what we have to look forward to uh, for that division. So today we're going to cover the American League West, and uh, it's a actually in a division that performed poorly as you can see here by the standings as minnesota won the division kind of a surprise and then uh they went on to lose to boston in the uh, american league championship series you also will see here that uh, ron hassey uh, was the mvp of the american league uh, from the new york yankees john tudor won the cy young pitching boston into the world series and kevin mitchell uh, won the Rookie of the Year for Oakland. Uh, he tied uh, with uh, Ron Hassey for second in the American League in home runs. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here with uh, the American League West. We're going to kick it off with Minnesota. Uh, they are um, a, a, an exciting team. Uh, they did uh, quite a bit uh, in the offseason. They had the biggest splash uh, in the... Uh, free agent signings. If you take a look here, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, first of all, I should mention uh, the Twins uh, got a new stadium in 1982. That was the year that the Metrodome opened. So there's going to be a, a new uh, stadium effects, park effects, uh, that we'll have to consider here. And um, I every season I go through and I have a mathematical equation uh, where I without getting too technical because uh, i'm sure it would be boring but i make adjustments to the park effects uh to actually uh, um, uh mirror what the team did that season so i'll be interesting to see what the twins do in 1982 they were actually in last place in the real uh 1982 season they've only won 60 games uh in the first year of the metrodome so again i'm kind of curious to see what this team does uh, for our 1982 simulation. Um, yes, they did sign uh, three pitchers. Let's take a look at them real quick. The biggest uh, free agent pitcher available was Doug Rao. They stole him from California, uh, a team right in their division. He goes right to Minnesota, who won the division. And uh, they signed him for a pretty decent contract, uh, uh, two years, three years for uh, $890,000. He went 13-5 and five last year. He was among the league leaders and wins. Uh, so um, a solid pickup for the first place team. In addition, they signed uh, Eric Rasmussen, who has one of the scariest baseball cards I've ever seen. Uh, I, I used to I remember when I opened the packs as a kid, and uh, I'd come across his. It was like a jack-in-the-box, like popping open. It would frighten me every time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm going to – actually, real quick, I'm going to post a card right here. So you can see what that card looks like. Don't be scared. I'm gonna, it's going to go away. All right. And so in addition to Eric Rasmussen, they also signed Bill Bottom, a starter for uh, Cincinnati last year. Uh, he, only, he made 15 starts in our short season. And actually, they stuck him in AAA. And uh, the Twins AAA team was the Toledo Mudhens. Now, of course, they're the Tigers uh, um, farm team. So uh, in addition... Uh, no, those are the three players that they gained. Uh, they lost Paul Hartzell, minor league pitcher, and the Coos, Jerry Kuzman, who signed with the New York Yankees. Going back to their lineup real quick, uh, Gary Renicki, their cleanup hitter, uh, he finished in the top 10, third overall, actually, in uh, RBI last year. Uh, Paul Moscow, the pitcher, was their only all-star. Uh, they drafted... Cecil Fielder in the first round so uh, of the 1981 draft. So he's on the way to the majors. Um, and uh, their sa uh, saves leader was uh, uh, Doug Corbett, who finished fourth overall in saves. Uh, so they didn't do much here for their offense, which I think is actually their weakness. Um, they are not uh, someone to shy away from making trades. Uh, so I'm assuming they'll probably have some good deals done uh, in spring training uh, before we even get the season started. So we may see some changes to their offense. Um, as you can see here, they don't have a lot of power, um, but they are strong in pitching. Let's take a look here. 
So Paul Moscow, they got last year in a trade in, uh, at the early part of 1980. And uh, Doug Rao, of course, he just signed uh, Chuck Rainey. They got from Boston last year. They brought up uh, Frank Viola, who did not have any success. Uh, but he was a rookie last year. And um, now he fits into the rotation. So maybe with a full season of Frank Viola, they'll improve. Um, and uh, Bob uh, Veselik is their number five starter. And that's with Bill Bonham with a better rating uh, here in the minors. So maybe they'll swap them out. Bullpen, look at that. That's probably how they got it done last year. They were awesome. Um, they lost Paul Hartzell, as I mentioned. They brought up uh, Mike Walters. I don't know much about him. But uh, you can see here, they have depth at starter. They got Bonham. They got Jeff Zahn. They got Vern Rule. Uh, for some reason, they have uh, Paul Splittorf down in A, And Dennis Burt, who was a, a major starter for them, with a great record in ERA, stuck down in A. So they have a lot of options as far as uh, pitching goes. But uh, will they repeat? I don't know. Um, the rest of the teams in this division, I don't think, got much stronger. We're going to take a look at the next team here. And that's going to be last year's reigning World Series champs, the California Angels. Let's go ahead and click over to California. There we go. Let's take a look at the team. Um, they added nothing to their lineup. Of course, they lost Doug Rao, as I mentioned, and they lost their starting right fielder, Dan Ford, uh, who they replaced with Mike Brown, who has good ratings, so maybe he'll perform. He got a cup of coffee last year. Hit six home runs. Steve Lubertich was in the top 10 uh, in home runs average in RBI. So he's uh, probably their best hitter. Uh, Brian Downing got injured, missed the last half of the season. He was one of the two all-stars for the uh, California Angels, uh, him and Doug Rao. And even having been an all-star, uh, they have uh, Brian Harper as a rookie coming up to uh, take the um, the main uh, position for for catcher, so I'm curious to see what uh, what that will do to this team offensively. When you have Pepe Mang Mangual leading off as a DH, why not have uh, Brian Downing in that role, or even Gary Pettis, who they have listed as a third baseman here. He's an outfielder. I, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. We'll fix that and change it to a center field position. Um, so let's take a look here uh, at the pitching staff. You know who's on this team. That son of a bitch, Frank Tanana. He had an off year. He went 7-11. He, um, he was in the top 10 in strikeouts, as expected. Ed Halicki, uh, their staff ace, uh, did miss a little bit of time with injuries last year. Uh, Dave Frost, Bruce Keeson, and Chris Knapp will round out the rotation. So as you can see here, just by looking at their ERAs, they that's probably the main reason why they faltered and lost the division to uh, the Angels, because their batters were pretty strong. Um, in relief, they have uh, Mark Clear finished in the top 10, uh, third overall in saves, in fact. Bullpen, uh, you know, give or take, uh, you know, any of those pitchers, to be honest, Mike Overy uh, or Overy, I think, I don't think Overy is <laughs> correct. Dave LaRoche, you got a couple lefties in there. Um, looking at what they have coming up the pipe here, they have uh, uh, Ron Romanic and uh, Mike Witt, of course. Great starter. He got a couple of starts last year. Uh, they have Don Ossi they can call up. I don't know why he's not in there. Um, he's stronger than uh, Mike Overy even. So, uh, you know, this team, uh, kind of boring. They didn't really do a lot to improve. They did nothing, in fact. Um, so, again, a pretty steady team offensively. You can't argue with those uh, with those uh, hitters. They led um, the American League in home runs, in fact, over the Tigers. So maybe um, that'll be good enough to get them over the top and back into first place if the pitchers come around. Okay, so we're going to move on to the third place team. This team is the Texas Rangers, and I got something cool to show you here. Texas Rangers, one of two teams that changed their logo in 1982. So this is the new logo for the um, Texas Rangers. And uh, we're going to pull up their team. This is the team that did the most additions in all of this uh, baseball simulation. 
They added Leon Roberts. They added Rodney Scott. They added Rick Manning. They, uh, uh, they re-signed uh, uh, Bump Wills, who they released and brought back. Uh, they signed the second best pitching uh, free agent, Moose Haas. They signed Jerry Mumphrey, and then they traded him to Houston in the offseason. They signed Baylor Moore for the bullpen, Bob McClure for the bullpen, Sid Mungie for the bullpen, and finally, Dwayne Kuyper. Uh, the one player they lost is their catcher, Jim Sundberg. Um, they, did, they do have uh, Daryl Porter, who was an all-star last year um, with Odie Davis, who was in the top 10 in batting average last year. So those were the two all-stars. They could afford to lose uh, Jim Sundberg with, um, you know, their everyday catcher being Daryl Porter. Uh, they decided to swap out Steve Garvey, who was in the top 10 in RBI, and bring up youngster uh, Pete O'Brien. So he got into one game last year. Oh, no, that was in 1980. So he didn't even play in the majors in 1981. And uh, they project him to be the starter at first base. So here's Rick Manning. He's in uh, the everyday lineup in center field. Of course, he played for Cleveland last year. And uh, good defensively. He hasn't hit a home run in ever. So he's got no power. Um, great defensive uh, outfielder, of course. Richie Zisk won a gold glove in right field. A big surprise. He was a terrible fielder in real life. And as you can see here, he's got a, a below average arm, below average uh uh, rating in right field. And then, uh, as I mentioned, they got uh, Leon Roberts, who actually did play for Texas uh, in 1982, but he uh, was traded midseason to, to Milwaukee and was a total dud for them down the stretch. And uh, let's see here, who else? Um, and everybody else they signed, that was a batter, uh, Rodney Scott, Dwayne Kuyper, uh, are in the minor leagues. So they're more for backup purposes. Let's take a look at the pitching staff for the Rangers. Uh, not great. Uh, they did sign Moose Haas, who had an off year last year, going 6-12 and for the Brew Crew. Of course, the Brewers could not re-sign them because they finished negative in cash. So he was um, released to free agency. They have Doc Medic, who was their staff ace last year. Um, he moves down to the second spot. They're going to finish it out with three minor leaguers. Don Kaner, Al Lakowitz, and uh, Jim Farr. Uh, so that rounds out the um, the rotation. They do have Ken Clay in the minor leagues. Uh, and uh, Brian Allard got a few starts uh, last year, uh, pitching 95 innings with a 6 ERA. So just horrible there. The bullpen, uh, this is very perplexing. Uh, Jim Kern finished second overall in saves last year. And they decided to bump him down for Tom Hankey. Uh, so, uh, the Terminator, that was his nickname, Tom Hankey. So, uh, yeah, they, they moved Tom Hankey in there. He does have better ratings, so I guess in reality that may make sense. And, uh, of course, they say Bob McClure, who I mentioned, and Bob Babcock they have back there. Probably the single funniest moment of the season last year with Bob Babcock facing Gary Hancock. Um, you can figure that out on your own. I think it's game 107, if you want to check it out from last season. Pretty funny. Uh, Charlie Huff, knuckleballer uh, in long relief. He probably could start if needed to. And then all the um, baseball uh, relievers all went to the uh, minor leagues that they signed, uh, Mungie and uh, Moore. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they have, some, they have some solid backups. They have Gaylord Perry with a 57. How can that even be? They need to uh, – this game should – automatically recognize these things and cut them, especially if they're in their final year of their contract. That's my personal um, you know, opinion on that. And uh, okay, so there's the Texas Rangers for you. Um, did they improve? I have to say so. I mean, they certainly didn't, um, not for a lack of trying. They've added plenty of good players. And um, so Mickey Rivers loses center field. Steve Carvey loses first base. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see how... Uh, the season pans out for the Rangers. Maybe uh, potentially a, um, a division winner if they can get the, the uh, starters right. Okay, next team up, Oakland Athletics. Uh, they also changed their logo in 1982, the other of the two teams in Major League Baseball. So more to the traditional A's uh, look. Okay, 
let's take a look at this team and their lineup here. They did add two players in free agency. They added uh, Jerry Remy, who steps right in, takes over second base. Um, and that means the uh, odd man out at second. Uh, oh, it's Shooty Babbitt, who moves to DH. Okay, and so no big deal. Love me some Shooty Babbitt. Um, and then the other uh, free agent signing was Larry Herndon, who kicked ass for the Giants and um, just probably pinch hitting duties for them. Let's take a look. As you can see, he was on the Tigers in 1982. So he has 74 appearances in 35 games. So he was basically a pinch hitter. Um, he'll come off the bench as a good fourth outfielder for the A's. Um, of course, Kevin Mitchell, he won Rookie of the Year. We're going to show you his stats here. Um, at only 19 years old, he hit 19 home runs. Uh, poor batting average. He didn't even get to a 700 OPS. So that was good enough to win the Rookie of the Year. But he's got a bright future ahead of him. 95 power. Wow, that's crazy. And he plays everyday third base, which is the position that he came up as. Of course, we know him as a left fielder who made that one-handed over-the-shoulder catch uh, heading toward the wall in left field. So uh, that was for the Giants, I believe. Uh, look up that highlight if you've never seen it before. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, they have uh, Ed Putman from the Detroit Tigers. We traded him over there last year. And um, Rusty McNeely, he finished uh, third in stolen bases last year with those 39. So uh, they have a lot of speed at the top of the lineup with Rusty McNeely and Jerry Remy. Shooty Babbitt can steal a base. I mean, Tony Phillips. Uh, Tony Phillips has to watch his back because they have Cal Ripken Jr. coming up as a 21-year-old this season. He's in single A ball in 1981. In real life, that was the year that he was a rookie. And in 1982, he wins Rookie of the Year. And uh, so I don't know if he'll make the team or not because Tony Phillips technically has uh, equal ratings uh, to Cal Ripken, but you could argue he should be on the team. Uh, so they have that to look forward to if they don't trade him. Carlton Fisk backing up a catcher. Uh, you got to love have Carlton Fisk on your bench. And um, I guess that, oh, uh, Tony Brewer, top 10 in RBI last year, out of nowhere. Pretty solid season. Here's a minor league card for him. As you see, uh, he wasn't even in the majors in 1982, but um, stepped in into left, uh, left field and uh, got the job done. So pretty cool. Uh, this is an interesting team uh, because of their speed. I, uh, I never liked playing them. For some reason, they always beat us. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at the pitching staff. We're going to see some names here that you're familiar with, and uh, that's going to include Rick Russell. Rick Russell, we traded him away. They absorbed his contract. They have a really high payroll for a small market team, and uh, but they are pro projected to make a profit. So uh, Mike Norris, their staff ace, going 9-8 last year. Um, Rick Russell and Matt Keogh. Now, the Oakland A's are the only team that has an injury. Uh, that will be resolved before opening day because we're 30 days out with spring training uh, yet to occur. So he'll move back into the um, starting rotation. He was their lone all-star last year, um, uh, going nine and four. So once uh, he comes off the uh, IL, uh, he will uh, move right back into the rotation and uh, we'll see if they remove uh, Larry White or uh, Mike Warren. They make a change in the bullpen uh, for closer Ernie Camacho, who was in the top 10 in saves, moves to short relief. And they're going to move in Ben Hayes. Uh, I remember him as a Cincinnati Red. I don't I don't know if he ever... No, he got traded last year. So that's how he got there. He is going to take over the closing du duties, at least out of spring training. Dan Schatzader, we traded him over there. He was part of the Ricky Henderson deal. We had to give up a lot to get Henderson... Uh, and we're going to miss Dan Schatzader. He did not even pitch uh, a game for the A's last year. So we'll see if that changes. Um, they have a couple backup starters and uh, Brian Kingman and Alan Wirth. But um, not a lot to go from there as far as their uh, pitching goes. Um, they do have, wait, where's, is Mike Moore on this team? I thought I saw him on here. Uh, no, he's on Seattle. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so 
that's going to do it for the uh, Oakland Athletics. Um, interesting to see how they do. They're probably still a mid, you know, a mid-pack team. Um, you know, most of these teams didn't even finish over 500. I think only the top two did, right? So um, we'll see if they can at least get to 500 next season. Okay, here is the Chicago White Sox. This is definitely the most boring team in the American League. Now, they did make some changes to the roster. We're going to take a look at it here. Um, so they signed uh, Paul Hartzell, pitcher, relief pitcher, who I mentioned that Minnesota released. Um, they did pick up Jim Sundberg, uh, but in a strangely uh, parallel move, they added Biff Pokoroba as catcher as well. So they got two free agent signing catchers. The one with the better arm and the better rating is on the bench. Um, Pokoroba is a switch hitter, so maybe that's the difference. Maybe we'll see Sundberg in there versus righties. I don't know. Um, great signing in Buddy Bell. They take Buddy Bell away from uh, St. Louis, um, who put up a pretty good season. He's actually always been a good player. Uh, you could count on him for uh, 10 home runs and 10 to 15 home runs and betting around 300 every year, playing an elite third base uh, defensively. Look at that arm. Great range, strong fielder. So that's a big plus for the White Sox. And they added uh, outfielder Tony Scott. Um, other than Buddy Bell, they've got nothing in this lineup. I mean, they have all a bunch of backups. I mean, Jim Sundberg should be the Ron Kittle. He should be their left fielder. Um, this game had him listed as a catcher, which he did in the minors. He never played it in the majors. So um, I did change him from, from catcher to left fielder. Um, so we'll see if that will help uh, get Ron Kittle into the lineup. When you have Rusty Kuntz as your everyday right fielder, that's not great. Um, I mean, Ron Kittle should be in there at DH. Uh, I, I mean, this is a tough lineup to look at. Now, Odeby McDowell was a great player uh, early in his career. He had speed. He hit for the cycle as a rookie. Um, he was on the uh, 1984 United States baseball team. This is the card representing that. He was on that team with Mark McGuire and um, Bill Swift. And uh, so he got some at-bats last year as an 18-year-old. He's a 19-year-old leading off for this team. He can play anywhere in the outfield, so he's an asset. Um, Mike Squires, no home runs at first base, but a great defender. Uh, and then everybody else in this lineup, I mean, they wouldn't make any other team. Uh, I'll give Biff, Biff Pokoroba some, um, some props. Uh, he's been a career backup, so if they end up using him here, as an everyday uh, catcher, I'll be curious to see what he does. This is the, what the 1982 cards, FLIR cards look like. One of the um, worst photographed series of any baseball cards I've ever seen. Um, like a, a shading, of uh, the blurriness, uh, it was just horrible. And when I was considering uh, doing like I did in the 1981 season, where I had all the, you know, probably not all the cards, but almost all the cards were created to show the players on their correct teams. Um, I was thinking about using this one because be, it would be easy for them to uh, replace the photograph um, and improve on it. But anyway, it's just too time consuming and uh, as great as they looked last year, uh, I, I just didn't feel the need to do that again this year. So we're using um, as cards to represent them, uh, whatever 1982 card, uh, you know, uh, uh, was created for them by the main manufacturers. Okay, so um, Thad Bosley, their best hitter last year, they move. He loses his left field job, or I think he DH last year actually. So he goes to the minors. Jerry Harrison's in the minors. Joe Gates, Joe Gates finished in the top ten in stolen bases, batted two seventy nine. He was the guy who lost out in them signing Buddy Bell. But you can't argue with that. I, I would take Buddy Bell over Joe Gates, but he should, they should find him a position in the infield because he plays somewhere else. Oh, no, he cannot. He would be below average anywhere else. So maybe, maybe that's the last we've seen of Joe Gates. Look at the, look at this. I mean, he, he was great. 284, 279. His OPS went up over 700 last year. Uh, 46 and 28 stolen bases. So uh, you got to feel bad for that guy. What's the guy got to do? And um, they have Harold Baines coming. Harold Baines played first base a little bit. 
Uh, actually, one game. He got six at bats in that one game. So Harold Baines, uh, he should be up there replacing uh, Mike Squires right now. I'm sure this team is going to have a lot of uh, changes throughout the season uh, offensively. Let's take a look at the pitchers. John Matlack is their staff ace. He was signed to a big contract last year, and he did make the All-Star game. He went 9-9 nine and nine with that 393 ERA, six complete games, top 10 in strikeouts last year. He was solid, um, not the 9-0 and record that he had in 1980 before he got injured. Uh, but he was signed to a pretty sizable contract, and he's um, going to be under a rule for another uh, two years after this season. So um, you would think their starting rotation would be better. They got Richard Dots, They got Ken Kravick. They got Francisco Barrios, who actually is dead in 1982. He died of a drug overdose. Um, but he's out there throwing it anyway. He's got a live fastball for being dead. Uh, and then Britt Burns will round out the top uh, five starters there. And um, he did get a little bit of a call up last year. So, uh, but he was, I mean, look at these. You can't argue with the ratings. This is solid. And they got Ross Baumgarten um, they could throw in. They have, they have Rich Wortham who could start, who uh, was an all-star in 1980 for them in this, uh, in this simulation. Uh, Bert Roberge. They got him from Houston last season, and he became their closer and did a great job. He was lights out. 7-0 and in relief with 14 saves. Uh, Dewey Robinson they re-signed, and, of course, former Tiger senior Smoke. So, I mean, this is a solid team. You can't really argue with their pitching staff. Their batters are horrible. They need to do a little investing there. Um, they have Lamar Hoyt, former Cy Young Award winner. Steve Trout, they have some players here that they can uh, bring up. So, um, yeah, I mean, looking at the rest of the uh, pitching staff, I don't see anybody else that excites me, but um, they do have some depth. So uh, that's going to do it for the Chicago White Sox. Let's move on to the Seattle Mariners. Let's pull up the Seattle Mariners logo here. Boom. There we go. And this team... Man, this is the fastest team in baseball. I will say that. Um, what good does it do them? I don't know. They um, have been somewhat disappointing in not being able to take that speed and convert it to wins. They've only signed one player, and that was Butch Weiniger, a two-time All-Star for the Dodgers. Did not have a good season uh, last year, but he's solid defensively. In 1982, he was actually uh, traded to the Yankees, as you can see here, uh, by his uh, baseball card. Uh, but he hit double digits uh, in 93 games. He's going to be their everyday catcher, which is a uh, huge improvement uh, over their uh, catchers from last season. Um, Dave Henderson was a gold glove center fielder for them, so congratulations to him. Don't forget, uh, Ricardo Sainz. Finished third in home runs. He was only 19 years old. He's 20 this year. I'm using his uh, baseball card from last season to represent him since he was was uh, only uh, he only played ever in the Mexican leagues, and um, so we're gonna use this card to represent him until he retires. Probably, um, he's got a lot of pop. He's got a lot of potential. So we'll see how that works uh, for him this year. Bruce Bocce finished in the top 10 in RBIs. Harold, Harold, ugh, Harold Reynolds, um, with his speed, will take over the everyday second base duties. He he had uh, he took over that position at the end of last season. I mean, this is a very young team, uh, with the exception of um, Butch Weiniger and uh, Bruce Bocce. He's thirty, right? He's thirty-one. So great season by him. Uh, then they have speed on the bench. They've got uh, Julio Cruz with twenty-six stolen bases. Uh, Mickey Brantley should be everyday outfielder for them, uh, but there's not a spot. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, basically there's scrubs beyond that. They have nobody on the bench that you feel like, uh, I mean, in the minor leagues that you could count on. Dave Valley could be the uh, catcher of the future for them. Well, they have a lot of players. Oh, look who they have. They have Mark McGuire. In, uh, yeah, he was drafted last year, right? Yeah, he was. There's Mark McGuire. That is his rookie baseball card worth um, a pretty penny if you can get it in a PSA 10 
a mint graded card. Um, so wow, they got they got him. They should put him in. Well, I guess Bocce's probably almost done with his career. So they have that to look forward to. And uh, Tom Pagnaz, Alvin Davis um, was a long time uh, solid Seattle Mariner with Phil Bradley as well. A couple time All Star for Phil Bradley. So, um, I mean, I would think this ought to be good enough. I mean, Rod Craig takes over the DH spot with a 77 rating. I think you need a little bit more from that. He's got an 82 power, so we get a little bit above average pop to his bat. So we'll see how they do in the kingdom uh, this season offensively. Let's take a look at the pitchers. Uh, Floyd Bannister. I mean, this is a great potential pitching staff. Floyd Bannister, their number five starter, top 10 in wins. Top, uh, he was the strikeout leader in, um, in our 1981 simulation. Mark Langston up there in strikeouts too, only 99, but he was in the top 10. Um, Roy Branch, uh, I mean, career minor leaguer, Jim Beatty, Rob Dressler lost 20 games in, uh, in 19, uh, 22 games, in fact, in 1980, and had a good bounce back year last year, going six and nine. Perhaps he can improve on that, improve on that. And then look at the um, bullpen, awesome. This bullpen is lights out. They're moving, whoa, They've got four lefties in the bullpen. I don't know if they'll break camp uh, with four lefties, but they might, and that would be f great by me because all of our hitters are righties on the Tigers. So, Rick uh, Anderson did a solid job as closer. He's going to keep that job this year. Let's take a look at their um, minor league pitching options. All a bunch of players that are in 70s. Brian Clark could come up and start. If someone gets injured, um, just, oh, there we go. So there's Mike Moore. Mike Moore had a really great, um, uh, I'd say, slightly above average career in real life. And so he's made seven starts last year for the Mariners. He could very well be uh, a starter by the end of this season as well. And, uh, yeah, not a lot to look for uh, in the single A either. So... Um, that's going to do it for the Seattle Mariners, uh, a, a speedy team. Got to make sure Lance Parrish is behind the plate when we play them. And then finally, the Kansas City Royals, oh, the wor worst team in the American League last season. And uh, we have a good surprise for this team. As we pull up the lineup, boom, here we go. Who did they add? They added Gary Hancock and he's in right field every day so we let him go um, last year and uh, only because we have such a great um, I say we I mean the Tigers uh, only because um, you know we have some good right fielders to replace him and I did feel like signing him for uh, more money than he deserved but he was a good player for us very reliable put up solid numbers and he's going to be the everyday right fielder for the Kansas City Royals, um, Glenn Borgman, they signed uh, to be their catcher, um, and that's a good uh, that's a, a good get. But Don Slot, who was their starting catcher last year, finished eighth overall in batting average in the American League, and he can't even get a job. So uh, I don't know what that's about. But Borgman does have a better rating. I, I think that's what we're getting at with that. The other player that they signed was Mike Paxton uh, to be in their rotation. They do have, uh, the Royals do have the number two overall pick in the draft this year uh, with Barry Bonds being available in the, in the uh, amateur draft. So we might be seeing Barry Bonds uh, sometime in the future for the Kansas City Royals if the number one team doesn't pick him. Uh, George Brett was an all-star. This is the only good hitter they still have on this team. you got to feel bad for him. Um, put up another good season, batted over 300. It's three years in a row for him. Um, I mean, he's everything you want in a third baseman defensively. And put up, I mean, Hall of Famer. Uh, what else can you say about George Brett? So uh, there you go with the uh, lineup for the Kansas City Royals. Willie Wilson uh, finished, what I think, fourth overall in stolen bases in the AL. So they have a little bit of speed at the lineup, uh, top of the lineup. Down below here, Ken Phelps 
Ken Phelps once hit two grand slams against my team in one game, and uh, now he loses his first base job to Pete Lecoq. Pete the Rooster. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. You may as well. Well, Ken Phelps can't play defense, but he was a career DH. But uh, I, so I guess maybe that might be the better option. Uh, minor leagues. What else do we have down here? Anything good to look forward to? They got Bip, Fred McGriff. They got the Crime Dog coming up. Uh, so he's was drafted last year, and um, if the uh, minor league system doesn't ruin him in Kansas City. He's definitely the first baseman of the future. That's pretty much it for the batters. Uh, Frank White, wow, batted 322 at second base last year. And, uh, well, George Orta had a solid season, so I can see why he's the second baseman for them. Okay, let's take a look at their pitching staff. This is, this is bad. This is maybe the worst pitching staff in the American League, worse than Cleveland even. They have Dennis Leonard as their ace. Of course, he was a great pitcher in his time, but um, at this point in his real-life career, he was injured. He missed a whole season, um, so he's probably going to fall off the table. And then you have Busby, Pachel, and Paxton, who in real life all had been, um, all had retired from baseball. They were no longer pitching, even in the minor leagues. Uh, Steve Busby did uh, finish his, the year in top 10 in uh, wins and strikeouts, so you got to give him that much and their um, rotation will round out with Rich Gale, who they got from uh, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, uh, the Giants. So uh, bullpen, pretty good. This is the best part of the whole team. Raleigh Eastwick probably should not be a closer, but he's going to take the duties since they traded uh, Dan Quisenberry to the Orioles. So Eastwick will be their closer. Maybe Mark Huseman might get some of the uh, opportunities closing and uh, the rest of the bullpen pretty solid they have larry gura as a starting option maybe should be in there over rich gale uh, as a lefty don't, they don't, ha don't even have a lefty in the rotation uh, going down uh, they have doug drabeck coming up uh, maybe see him this year he's in single a though and that's all they have to look forward to that is sad this team um you know, this is probably still a last place team. You feel bad for George Brett. I mean, you may as well trade him, try to get something good for him. Uh, and Rance Mullenix, he did win the gold glove at shortstop. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but he was a gold glove winner. So, uh, yeah, that's going to close out our American League West preview for uh, today. What we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the rest of the week off. We're going to come back Friday and Saturday of next week and do the Ameri uh, the National League East and the National League West preview. We never talk about the National League because we've basically, uh, with the Tigers being in the American League, um, we have not spent any time ever really talking about what the National League is doing other than showing the standings. So we're going to uh, cover them uh, briefly uh, next week, just so everyone knows where everyone who was a free agent uh, landed uh, in, uh, in baseball. So... Hopefully that will be, that'll be fun for everyone. So uh, that's going to do it for today. We're going to come back next week. Until then, everyone, have a great day.